Am I the antagonist for not agreeing to give my oldest daughter a bigger share of my estate? I, 45-year-old male, have two daughters Sarah, 23-year-old female, and Chantal, 16-year-old female, by my first and second wives respectively. My first wife was someone who I met in middle school, dated on off and through high school, and married after college. During this time Sarah's mom swore up and down that I was her only man, and I believed her because of how strict and religious our respective families were as she was my one and only as well. I thought Sarah's mom would be my forever, but I was wrong as it came out that Sarah's mom cheated on me multiple times with at least two men. I only discovered this because one of the men that Sarah's mom cheated on me with had a wife who very publicly confronted her with video proof, and the second man confessed, he had evidence too, as a way to get back at my first wife. The guy that she cheated with was an old boyfriend she had in college, and was possibly Sarah's father. I was devastated, had a huge mental breakdown and had to be hospitalized. After I was out I tried to forgive and tried to move on, but every little misstep sent me off, and it wasn't healthy. It wasn't an easy decision, but I decided to divorce, and Sarah's mom did not make it easy, and kept using Sarah as a way to keep the marriage intact, was she was proven to indeed be my daughter. It wasn't until my Aunt Pearl said something to Sarah's grandparents that got them to convince her mom to stop being difficult. The divorce that was finalized we worked out a custody arrangement and I felt so relieved. I eventually met Chantel's mom and married her shortly after our daughter was born. Uncle's wife wasn't happy about it as she frowned premarital intimacy but eventually accepted it. Unfortunately Sarah and Chantel don't have the best relationship because my ex-wife took the news of my second marriage badly, which affected Sarah and she also viewed my Chantel as illegitimate and constantly accused her of not being my daughter, as she didn't look like me. Chantel is biracial. Fast forward to now, my aunt has passed away and left Chantel a sizable trust, but only gave Sarah one dollar because she found the idea of Sarah giving any money that she inherited from her to my ex as unacceptable. I had no idea about this until the reading of the will, but now Sarah, her mom, and maternal want me to only leave Chantel one dollar and give her everything to make up for it, but I don't want to. Sarah and Chantel are both my children and should inherit from me equally. I do feel bad for Sarah but have no control over what my aunt did. Am I the a-hole if I don't do what Sarah wants? Not the antagonist. The aunt's inheritance to Chantel has nothing to do with your estate. They are both your daughters. The aunt chose who got what of her money and it was her right to do so. To ask you to make it fair is ridiculous. You had zero control of your aunt's wishes. None. If she decided to give it all to a charity, there would be no discussion. Am I the antagonist for expecting my son to buy his own groceries? I, 38 years old female, live with my son's Lloyd, 21 years old male and Peter, 9 years old male. My father, 69 years old male, helped me raise Lloyd for the first couple of years, so I could complete college and get a job. I am forever grateful to my father. My dad loves Lloyd and he 100% has a blind spot where he is concerned. In his eyes Lloyd can do no wrong. My dad would override my parental authority and tear me a new one if he thought I was being too strict or unfair. I then met Peter's father, we divorced and he passed away last year. Lloyd spent the last three years trying to complete his general educational development GD, unsuccessfully. The first two years' failures were my fault because I did not help him enough. I work full-time and have another child that just started school. Last year Lloyd went to stay with my dad, who is retired, who helped and tutored him. The results were the same. When Lloyd returned home, we had a serious talk and I told him that I expected him to get a job, take some financial responsibility, and to act polite and respectful. Back to now, Lloyd decided that he does not like my cooking and told me not to bother making him dinner anymore. That's fine, all he wants to eat is fries, chicken, pasta and bread. For a skinny dude he eats like he's hiding a family of four in his stomach, fast metabolism. I ended up getting Lloyd a job via a friend. It's hard labor and minimum wage. With his wages Lloyd cannot afford to live on his own. Our agreement was that Lloyd would be responsible for paying for his groceries, lunch, dinner, snacks, and his toiletries. I still buy all the rest. I earn a good salary, but still need to work on a strict budget. Even if finances weren't an issue, I still would have expected the same from Lloyd as it learns crucial financial life skills, while having the safety net of living at home. I also drive Lloyd to and from work each day, he hasn't got his license yet, or pay for Uber if I am not able to take him. I do his laundry, though apparently, I'm a BB at Chie, and not a decent human being, because I asked him to help me once to take the washing off the line. And he doesn't pay rent or utilities. Lloyd told his grandpa of my abusive behavior towards him, we have had a few of screaming matches, but he was referring to him having to spend his wages on food. And now, my father hasn't spoken to me in weeks. I sat down with Lloyd to talk about how he's telling my father that mom washed her hands off me and threw me to the wolves to fend for myself, was causing problems between me and his grandpa. He was like, well yes, that is exactly what is happening. There is no regret there. He is now trying to convince his grandpa to buy him his own mini fridge and freezer, deduce from that what you like. But this time around I'm taking a stand and have stubbornly refused to give an inch. I am, not so, slowly becoming bitter and resentful towards Lloyd. 
all of this drama just because I told my son to pay for his own groceries. Am I wrong in asking this of him? Am I the antagonist? From what you've written, you have not gone far enough. Time for Lloyd to learn how to fend for himself. He's 21 and not in school, disrespecting you in your own house. Give him three six months to find another place to live, even if it means going back to your dad's. He needs a wake-up call to grow up and be independent. My dad shared his concerns to me about my BFF. Not sure if we should talk this out or how. I have been with my boyfriend for a year and a half. I was widowed in my early 20s, and my whole family was heavily traumatized as we tried to navigate my grief. However, it connected us, and I am very close with both of my parents now. They are also my neighbors. My boyfriend never had an adult relationship before me. He said he focused on finishing school and establishing himself in a career before looking for a partner, which I found admirable. However, he lived with his extremely religious parents until about half a year ago and has put me through a lot with his growing pains. Over time, this has manifested as me slightly detaching because I can only take so much getting yelled at over random things and unnecessary boundary pushing. I find myself having to convince him instead of him immediately trying to understand when I say he has hurt my feelings more often than not. But we don't fight very much, and I do feel he gets better every time. Today, my dad sat me down and had a shocking talk with me. He told me financially I would never have to work again if I didn't want to, and I invested properly, I became very wealthy from the way my husband died. And because I'm already chronically ill, I should have someone who accepts that later in life, I may need extra help. I own my home and vehicle plus a ton of land, and my parents are in the same boat. He said he was of course leaving their property to me, and my grandpa had said he had also put me as his heir. He went on to tell me that he's frustrated because he feels I'm not as happy as I should be, and he had been debating on how to say it for a long time. He went on to say that the way I speak about my boyfriend is concerning, and he feels the boyfriend is always going to prioritize his parents. He says the boyfriend has thrown up some red flags in multiple conversations, and despite not being religious, dad gets the vibe that he still has a lot of misogynistic feelings toward women's place in the world. I could see it too, as the boyfriend's mom works full-time and does 100% of cleaning and chores. When I'm over his dad always says something mean to her, and I get uncomfortable, plus his dad dislikes me over being a widow, and my boyfriend has never defended me on this. He ended it by saying he knows that I'm an adult and he trusts whatever decision I make, but he sees no spark between us. And it makes him sad that I'm not with someone who makes me shine the way my late husband did. He also said he's concerned that when I inherit all of these properties, my boyfriend will not respect my choices and try to push me toward what benefits him or even worse. He asked if I felt my boyfriend would 100% stick by my side when I'm older and how he would navigate my health when he has previously not shown in a huge emergency because it was Father's Day and he couldn't let his dad down. I didn't know what to say, and he said I didn't have to give him any answer at all, he just wanted to chat with me and throw out his perspective. I appreciate it, and I think he made a lot of fair points, but I have no idea how to navigate this conversation with my boyfriend now. Maybe we don't even need to have one, and I need to continue observing. If we talk about it, how would I word this to be less negative? Just negative behaviors and red flags. Listen to your gut, and don't settle for someone who brings you so much stress and discomfort. Your father cares about you and sees what you may not be willing to admit. It's time to prioritize your own well-being and happiness. Am I the antagonist for telling my husband that asking me a thousand questions is not actually helpful? I, 33 years old female, work a stressful, busy job from home. He, 33 years old male, is a disabled veteran stay-at-home dad to our two elementary school-aged children. While I am working, he is usually in the room with me, playing on his Steam Deck laptop. He is responsible for picking up the kids from the bus stop after school, giving them a snack, and helping them with homework until I finish work and start dinner. The majority of cooking, cleaning, shopping, planning and appointments fall on me, and I have been feeling overwhelmed for a long time. He is aware of this, and when I bring it up, he gets defensive at first, thinking I am trying to dictate to him. This often leads to him feeling unappreciated, and me having to reassure him that I appreciate the things he does around the house. However, I feel like I have too much on my plate and not enough time for myself. Even my short breaks at work are spent cleaning or eating quickly. Our disagreements stem from me feeling unacknowledged and him feeling inadequate. Recently, he has been irritable and taking it out on me, admitting that he has been depressed. We talked about it and agreed to support each other. He also agreed to take on more household tasks, and we made a chore list together. Today, he is in charge of making dinner. During my break, he asked for guidance on what to cook based on what was available. When I suggested he check the freezer but avoid using the burger patties, he became upset. He wanted me to tell him exactly what to cook and got frustrated when I didn't provide a detailed plan. This led to an argument, and he questioned why he was trying to do something nice for me if I was being difficult. This situation felt familiar from a previous incident just two days ago. Now, I believe that his expectation for me to plan out dinner for him does not alleviate my workload and shows a lack of understanding or concern for my feelings. I do my best to accommodate him, but he is capable of checking the freezer and deciding on a meal himself. I am not here to micromanage him. 
Am I wrong for not just giving in and telling him what to cook? Not the antagonist. It's clear that he is deliberately avoiding helping out and putting an effort in the relationship. The weaponized incompetence and remorse tactics he uses are designed to make you feel guilty and end up doing everything yourself. He needs to step up and start acting like a true partner, but it seems like he's comfortable with the status quo. Consider therapy, but ultimately, he needs to want to change for any progress to be made. Am I the antagonist for the way I talked about my GFS weight gain? We have been together for two and a half years, and those two events happened somewhere over the past couple of months. My girlfriend has gained about 50 pounds over the course of our relationship, and she was very insecure about it but I never pointed it out or suggested she do something I've only ever given her compliments how gorgeous, stunning, beautiful she looks. However, on some occasions I might have messed up with the things I told her. On one occasion my girlfriend called me after her mom had commented her outfit, don't wear that, you look huge in that. At first I reassured her that she looked great, but she kept asking and asking. In the past she had always insisted I be real with her. She would ask the same question 10 or 20 times over and over again. No please be honest, I want you to tell me the truth. I don't want to hear a simple, you're gorgeous, she asked me, but people will judge you know, if you wear skin tight stretchy fabric or crop tops or short skirts or, or, does that mean whole categories of clothing are off limits if you gained a lot of weight? And I responded for future reference. When you ask me those kind of questions, do you want me to give you advice on what to wear and what is flattering? Or do you just want reassurance? She felt that this was a very malicious thing to say and that it really hurt her. Her father told her you look like a pig, so I spent several hours reassuring her that afternoon. Told her this kind of comment says more about him than about her, told her how good she looked, etc. She kept asking me about the weight she had gained over and over again. Hey, I know I gained weight. Please don't just say I'm gorgeous. I want you to be honest with me. Am I fat? At some point I relented, no, you're not fat. Yes, you gained some weight, but really not all that much. If you were to gain some more than yes, you would become chubby. But right now, you're in a normal range. She felt that using the word chubby was really cruel and ignorant of me. We spent some more time talking about the topic and crop tops came up. She kept poking me with questions be real. Does a crop top still look good? Again, I kept telling her how good she looked. Yet again she kept replying but I don't care what you think. Imagine you did a survey on the street. Statistically, what do you think men would say? I told her if someone gained a lot of weight, wore a crop top and had a visible muffin top, then yes, statistically on average, men would not find it as attractive. She found my choice of words very inconsiderate. Am I the asshole for the way I responded? Those words were very hurtful to her and I probably should have said something else. Your girlfriend seems to be struggling with insecurities surrounding her weight gain and is seeking validation through baiting you into saying something negative. This cycle of seeking validation and lashing out is self-defeating and damaging to both her mental health and your relationship. It may be beneficial for her to seek therapy to work through these insecurities and learn to love herself. Offering support and suggesting activities to address the issue together could lead to positive change, but ultimately, she needs to take active steps for self-improvement. Am I the antagonist for telling off my future sister-in-law, causing her to drop out of the wedding? I, 36F, am marrying a wonderful man in April so things are coming up fast. I've been planning this wedding for over a year now. I have my cousin, 45th childhood friend, 36F, and my future sister-in-law. 36F, in my wedding party. All was going well with the planning until we couldn't get my future sister-in-law, let's call her ally, to respond to any of the planning messages. We would talk in a group chat, call or text her individually until we finally decided to plan a day and hope she's able to join us. Fast forward to a few days before, still no response from ally so I had to jump in to help decorate for the shower and cover any extra costs that she failed to help with. The day of the shower ally shows up, but with her three-year-old she told us she would not be bringing. We love kids and that's no problem, but if we had known we would have planned activities for the three-year-old. Since we didn't know, nothing was planned and she was bored and ran around. I ignored most of it and just had the best time to try and keep things from being awkward. That wasn't the only problem that day. She then was asking when she would be able to leave shortly after the shower started and said she would be unable to attend the bachelorette. This is okay, at least she made the shower. When it ended and as we were cleaning up, Ally just left without even an offer to help. What finally made me snap was being called by my future mother-in-law and being told Ally decided she was too busy to get ready with us on the wedding day and had plans to do her own hair and makeup elsewhere. I, why, was, fuming. I told her I had it taken care of and paid a professional to do hair and makeup at our place. It was around $350 a person and I have given the final head count so it's all locked in. Days later, she asked what was next and I explained it was the rehearsal and the wedding itself. She then told me no one was telling her anything so I explained how we tried everything we could and that her absence and lack of interest was hurtful. She then asked about the hair and I explained. 
and this is where I might be the ah because this is a white lie, that it was cancelled because she said she wasn't interested, and asked her to let me know next time she changed plans so we can avoid situations like this. Well she flipped out and told me no one was telling her anything, and that I should have consulted her. I calmly explained that we tried everything we could to reach out to her, that I don't have to consult her for anything for my wedding day, and never once got mean with her. I then told her she owes us all an apology for her actions and absence. She told me to have a nice life, called me immature and dropped out of the wedding. I am exhausted. Am I the asshole too? Not the antagonist. It sounds like you handled the situation politely and absolutely not the a-hole. Not sure what's going on with your future sister-in-law, but good luck with her in the future. If the hair and makeup can't be refunded, consider treating someone else close to you at the wedding so you're not throwing away $350. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.